I'm going to call to order the regular meeting of the Con Council of the City of Platteville, Tuesday, July 22nd, 2014, and we will start with roll call. Barbara Stackhausen? Yes. Dick Bonin? Yes. Ken Here. Killen? Here. Eileen Nichols? Here. Amy Siebel? Here. Mike Den has been excused, and Barbara Doss? Here. The first item this evening, uh, well, we actually have four public hearings. The first one is relative to Ordinance 1410, rezone of 130 and 150 Market Street. And we'll start with staff presentation. Okay, the, uh, this started with the, uh, regarding the property at 130 Market Street, which is for sale. Uh, there's a buyer that's interested in purchasing that property, but the, uh, the use that they have in mind for that property is not permitted, um, even though that property, as far as I can tell, it's always been a residential uh, property as far as the use it's zoned institutional which does not allow residential uses and actually that type of district is very unusual in my opinion for a privately owned property you know if you look at the types of uses that are allowed in institutional it's it's primarily government um, church schools etc type of uses so there are limited uses in that district that would be appropriate for a privately owned property um, so the the applicant is looking at um, they're requesting a rezone to Central Business Transition District. Um, that's a, a, a district by, you can tell by the name, that's appropriate for the area kind of between the downtown area, commercial area, and the surrounding residential area. So it kind of allows a somewhat of a mixture of the two types of uses. Much more appropriate, in my opinion, for that type of location, and it does fit with the, uh, the spa uh, use that's intended by the uh, purchaser of that property. Uh, they put a spa on the ground floor and an apartment on the second floor. Um, so that was the request to rezone 130 Market Street to CBT Central Business Transition District. Um, I had also looked at the property next door, 150 Market Street, which in my opinion is a very similar situation, even though the current use as a physical therapy uh, clinic is allowed in the institutional district. It still has the same type of problems that it's you know, long range it's limited uses for a privately owned property. Um, so I thought it would be appropriate to consider changing the zoning for that property as well, um, since they're side by side and they have a similar situation. So um, I also made that recommendation to include that property uh, to rezone it to CBT, uh, Central Business Transition. Um, the Plan Commission did consider this, uh, both of these properties at their July meeting. Um, they did recommend approval of the rezoning to central business transition. There was some discussion at that meeting about uh, some of the other potential uses um, that could be allowed in the CBT. Um, Margaret, the owner of 150 Market Street, did have a, a few concerns. In particular, she mentioned the um, fraternity sorority house. Um, so she suggested B1, uh, neighborhood business. Um, so I. I included in your packet a you know list of the different uses that are allowed in each one of those districts. Um, in my opinion, the CBT is a, a better fit for that location. Uh, B1 would also work as far as the proposed uses. Uh, the plan commission also thought the CBT was a better fit based on that location of those properties. Um, the last meeting, there was a question about the parking um, difference between those for that proposed use at 130 Market Street. Uh, since it's a fairly small property, there isn't a, a big parking demand one way or another, but uh, B1 would be four spaces, CBT would be three spaces. Uh, just for comparison, B2 doesn't have a parking requirement unless they're expanding the building, so that would be zero spaces. So, um, as I mentioned, the Planning Commission recommended approval, and I would also recommend approval. Any questions? Any questions from the Council? Well, I thank you, Joe, for putting in the parking part. The uh, only reason I brought it up is so that the applicant knows uh, what the uh, amount of parking requirement is. And, and so with the CBT, they could put in fraternities and sororities, correct, in the future? I believe it's, it's a conditional use permit. It's a conditional use, district. but then they'd have to meet the parking requirement, and since there's only a few spaces on the lot, uh, or either lot, they couldn't meet it unless they had parking some other place. Right, and, and there would also be, with the new 
building code requirements for fraternities and sororities, it would have to be sprinklered and there's some other obstacles to that type of use and that type of building. So I, I think it would be unlikely myself, but it, it is permitted as a conditional use. Thank you. I'm, yes. let's do something else, I'll make a motion. Well, actually we need to go through the oh, that's public right. statements that's in favor. <laughs> we do have two people, um, Jeff and Lisa Haas, who have registered just in favor and not to speak. They, well, they would speak if there are questions or do you want to speak? Okay. Uh, and Melissa Gormley also s registered in favor. Are there any public statements against? Any public statements in general? Council discussion? All right, Dick, a motion to close the public hearing? Yes. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. <laughs> Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Now, as far as Common Council action, I will. Um, recuse myself from voting because I do have an interest in the property. I'm uh, involved in the sale of the property, so. Okay, well, I, I move that we adopt the recommendation by the city staff. Is there a second? Second. Move a motion and a second and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols abstains. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. All right. The second item is Ordinance 1411, Annexation of 1536 County Highway B. Okay, okay this is uh, one of the properties that the city acquired through the legal proceedings from, uh, it was formerly a Kallenbach house. Um, now that the city owns it, um, the request is to annex it into the city. Um, so it is part of the city uh, tax rolls and is subject to our zoning and building code requirements. Um, the property is contiguous to the existing city limits. It borders the city. It's just on the, uh, the west side of the city. Um, so it does meet the annexation requirements. Since it is a city owned property, the annexation procedure is very straightforward. Basically, you just have to vote to annex it in. Um, there is no state uh, review in this particular case. So. Um, that is the request for annexation. Any questions? Questions, anyone? All right, any public statements in favor? Public statements against or in general? Any further discu council discussion? Is there a motion to close the public Move hearing? to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second, we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. And Common Council action. I move uh, to annex the property at 1536 County Highway B. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next item also relates to 1536 County Highway B for a rezone, Joe. Yeah, this is just to formally change the zoning from the uh, since it was an ET zoning area, now it's in the city. Uh, we have to change the zoning. Uh, it was uh, R1 residential in the ET, so we would keep with that uh, R1 residential uh, in the city. It's just subject to Chapter 22 instead of Chapter 25. So it, it does fit the uh, current use of the property. So staff would recommend approval. Any questions? All right, public statements in favor, against? In general, council discussion doesn't appear to be any questions. Motion to close the public hearing. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. And common council action. Motion to designate the property zoning as R1 single family residential on this property at 1536 County Highway B, which was just annexed. Second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. And the last public hearing preliminary plat for the industrial park number seven. 
Okay. Okay. This is a property that the city recently uh, acquired to allow for expansion of the industry park. It's about 39 acres on East Side Road. Uh, the preliminary plat would divide the property into nine lots. They would range in size from 1.7 acres to 7.5 acres. It would also extend um, Vision Drive from East Side Road to Phillips Road, so it does provide a connection to Phillips Road and gets rid of that dead end. Uh, the plat also includes some outlots that would allow for, or at least maintain some of the right of way for the future extension of Phillips Road to the south and Evergreen Road um, to the west. And um, it does have the, uh, at least information is a uh, proposed layout for the lots and as well as the utilities that would serve those lots. And um, one question that came up last time was about how, it, or maybe it was a plan commission meeting, you know, why those lots were configured the way they were and there was, the attempt was made to try to keep as much flexibility in the layout so that you could combine some of those parcels to get different lots depending on the needs of uh, a potential buyer. So that was uh, given some thought when they came up with that plat. Um, the plan commission did recommend approval and staff also recommends approval. Any questions? Paydick is also. Paydick also recommended approval, correct. Okay. Uh, public statements in favor, against, or in general? Wants a discussion. Uh, just uh, would point out that it is my understanding that on, that the maximum number of exits from any lot in this onto East Side Road would be one, and that would be lot from lot 40. Otherwise, all access should be on I would call feeder roads, whether it's Evergreen and extended Re Evergreen Road or Vision Drive. Uh, either that or Phillips. The other one is Phillips. Phillips Road or whatever it is. Is that correct. a question or? No, that's my understanding. That's when your I understanding. make a motion, I'll make it that way. That's, that's <laughs> correct. First, we need a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move. Second. I have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Motion carries. Now we need a motion. I make a motion we approve the preliminary plat for the Platteville Industry Park number seven with the understanding that only one access be allowed other than via road in this uh, plat and that be from what is currently defined as lot 40. And maybe we won't even have to have that. <laughs> is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a Question. second. Yes. We are given two maps. Which one are we approving? One with the uh, pond addition or the one without the pond? Oh, yeah. I will rely on Joe to answer that. Um, the one without, the, the other map was included primarily to show the infrastructure that would be okay. provided as part of the expansion. This is a preliminary plat, so it will be coming back for the final plat. Uh, which will actually get recorded. Okay. We have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Siebold Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next, we have a special presentation from Southwest Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission regarding Taxi Co Consolidation Feasibility Study. That's a long title there. If you would introduce yourself when you get to the microphone, please. My name is James Winters, and I'm an associate planner with Southwestern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. My name is Colton Hackett. I am the outreach coordinator uh, for this commission. I want to extend a special thank you to, to Howard. Uh, he, we had some technical difficulties setting this up. Our system didn't want to have a handshake with your system. And so, Howard, I ran, I think, to the police station to get um, your projector and your laptop. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. James, just, just one minute. Did you have a question? I have a question um, at the start here. Who are going to be the managers as far as in the city and in the university? Well, I you, who are you proposing? Well, what we're proposing today is essentially going to come down to creating a formal agreement between both entities. Um, and it's an update on the status of the plan as we've written it so far. 
in terms of who would actually manage the service, uh, I, what we've seen in other systems is that uh, it's a shared responsibility between both entities. And in the final planning document, we have an example from Stevens Point. We have a, a written uh, contract from Stevens Point, which we could replicate for this potential system. Okay, other, uh, other questions. One, what happens to taxi service? I'd like to see that explained in, in a later presentation. Also, how do you plan to publish the routes for the people so they know where the routes are and when they change and sure. so they're, they're aware? And, uh, and also, what's going to be increased net cost to the city, if any? Great. Those are great questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm especially happy that you talked about increased net cost to the city because one of the, uh, one of the uh, major aspects or major points of this plan was how we can potentially increase service or decrease costs, but overall uh, a finite uh, parameter of the plan was to not increase costs for either partner, not in any capacity. Um, but to get back to the slides that I prepared, uh, in March of 2014, the Platteville Common Council approved a 20% match for, for a grant that would fund research into transportation planning for the city. This study will determine the feasibility of combining the City of Platteville shared ride taxi and the University of Wisconsin student shuttle into one system. And this is a strategy we're seeing all across Wisconsin and, sim and cities that are very similar to Platteville. Uh, so briefly, we're going to discuss the background of the project as well as some preliminary findings of our research. So currently, the Wisconsin Department of Transportation and the federal government will fund 58.4% of the total cost of a transportation system. Right now, the Platteville Shared Ride Taxi is receiving that subsidy. However, the University of Wisconsin Student Shuttle is ineligible for the subsidy because they are not a government body. So theoretically, if we merge the Platteville Shared Ride Taxi with the Platteville Student Shuttle through a formal partnership between the city and the university, we can potentially increase service while also potentially decreasing the local cost for each partner. And this is because we can we can pull from a larger pool of funds to match state and federal funding. So the questions that we started with were, can we leverage more funding for Platteville's transportation programs by uniting the shared ride taxi and the student shuttle? And while also answering, can we leverage more funding without increasing costs to Platteville residents? And to answer that question, we looked at other systems. Um, again, like I mentioned, that we've seen this all throughout Wisconsin. So for this project, we examined a few uh, peer group systems. And what a peer group is, is it's a term that Wisconsin DOT uses to uh, define cities that are similar to ours. So we're looking at cities with populations between 2,500 and 50,000 people uh, that also have a University of Wisconsin location and that were awarded the same type of funding resources that we were looking at. And what we found is that there are three uh, systems that have very similar needs to Platteville with very similar systems as what we're looking in to see if it's feasible. And that was uh, Stevens Point, Whitewater, and Menominee. And this background search that we did gave a significant insight into strategies, including budget strategies, uh, routing recommendations, and how to actually apply for the grant. So the question is, it, but having knowledge of the other systems still leaves us with the question of how the service can be expanded. And we got to the answer specifically through outreach by working directly with the residents of Platteville. So over the course of this project, we surveyed 447 community members and we asked them about the existing conditions of the Platteville transit options that they have. That's the shared ride taxi and the student shuttle. We also asked them specific information about what destinations they wanted to go to as well as the times they traveled, uh, how long they want to wait for traveling, and how long they're willing to travel. And overall, what we found is that the, the shuttle had two main issues, and that was wait and ride time, that the shuttle has, is operating on an hour-long loop, and students 
don't want to wait that long to get to their destination. And that's a key obstacle for them. Also, the students don't necessarily feel they can get to all the destinations that they would like to visit. The key issues for the taxi were primarily Sunday hours. We found that a lot of individuals wanted to be able to uh, go to church and then visit with their friends and family immediately, after, immediately afterwards or go out to lunch. And they couldn't because they were worried about being stranded because the taxi only has service until 1 p.m. And also another issue with the taxi was awareness, that not a lot of people, especially students, didn't know about the taxi and didn't know that that opportunity was available to them. The outreach also gave us a set of key destinations that were important to highlight in the study. So for instance, the campus was obviously a very important destination. Uh, shopping, groceries, and pharmacies are the essentials of what everyone needs to do. Uh, getting to and from the downtown, uh, getting to restaurants and their places of employment, as well as visiting friends and family in residential areas were all indicated as very important to those 447 individuals we surveyed. But the survey doesn't mean anything if you can't fund it. So how much funding are we considering and what's available and what does that look like? Well, so this is a, uh, a proposed budget. Here we're comparing the differences between the current budget and the proposed maximized budget. On the left, we see the portions of the budget as they currently exist, simply added together. So this is, if you take, on the left here, if you take all of the transportation in Platteville and you just lump it together, because this university is not receiving that subsidy, uh, we, the citizens of Platteville, either students or taxpayers, are paying 44% of the local match. And the state and federal subsidy is at 38.14%. However, if we merge the two systems, then the subsidy, you can see, increases to 58.4%. And the amount that the city and the university would potentially have to pay drops down to 29.17%. So with, with, if we, so because of, if we merge the two systems, we can see a potential increase in the amount of service hours we can purchase while also decreasing the cost to the resident and to the city and to the university. But it's not enough to just create one set of recommendations. So we actually gave uh, the city and the university uh, two different scenarios that answer two different questions. And each scenario has three models. So scenario 1.1 through 1.3 answers, in what ways can we save the city and the university money? And then scenario two addresses what is the maximum amount of funding that we can leverage and how do we spend it? And it's important to note that both of these scenarios, neither of them increase any cost to the city or to the university. But we took these scenarios and then we crafted a series of flex flexible, flexible, actionable recommendations for both the city and for the university. But what do those recommendations look like? and what services could Platteville receive and expand on. So this next map is our proposed route. And you can see, so this dotted line is the city boundary. And you can see that this is centered on the northwest portion of the city. Now what you're actually looking at are two concurrent routes. So what, we're, what we've illustrated here is this section right here, we're calling it the Campus Express route. And that's a, that's a shuttle that services the campus and its most immediate neighborhoods. And then the rest of the map is a series of loops to be administered by one bus that travels throughout the city and returns to a common point, which is uh, the Pine Street Loop right at the entrance to the university. And what this does is instead of having one continual loop that loops throughout the whole city where uh, an individual could have to wait up to an hour to get to their stop, it means that no matter where you are in the city, you're 10, five, 10 minutes away from your desired location. So this next slide illustrates uh, the approximate walking distance to each stop. So the Wisconsin Dis uh, Department of Transportation estimates that a walking distance is about a quarter of a mile or three blocks. So here, each transparent circle is approximately three blocks away from the desired stop. And so you can see under this current system that we're proposing, 
uh, or that you have the option to, to implement rather, 90% uh, of the city is covered by these stops. Our plan also goes into specific strategies for routing, for the actual grant application, and for evaluation. You know, it's not enough to just give you a set of, of routes. You actually have to be able to implement it. And so that's what um, it's also included in the plan. So overall, we've seen that the city and the university have a lot of options to consider when they're planning the transportation system. While the city and the university can choose from a number of options, that formal partnership that I was talking about in the beginning will be absolutely essential. Uh, so returning to the initial questions, can we leverage more funding for, the, for Platteville's transportation programs by uniting the shared ride taxi and the student shuttle? And can we leverage more funding without increasing costs to residents? Absolutely. I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, um, thank you. So in reading this, I read that I could ride the shuttle for a dollar. Theoretically, yeah. So one of the, uh, the, the plan, the way that we built the plan, we tried to maximize the amount of options for both the university and for the city. So in that plan, we also have uh, a set of fare amounts. So we have, if the university decided to charge $2, we have budget projections for that. If the city decided, decided to only charge $1, we have budget projections for that. What we've recommended is that they go with the $1 option. Getting back to my original thing about um, time, how do I know when I can get on? What's gonna be the system that I can look up and, and find out that I can get on a shuttle someplace and ride out to? Sure. May I answer that, James? Right. Of course. Can, can I can probably answer that question. Um, so disclaimer, I work at the university where I do manage the shuttle right now as well. And um, we, the public can ride the shuttle right now for a dollar a ride. It starts during the academic school year and it does not run while classes are not in session. But anybody's welcome to ride and the full schedule is available at uwplat.edu backslash transportation. Um, we're getting a phone app installed this week so people will be able to download an app and look at the bus in real time and know exactly where it is and when they can get on. It should be working after Thursday, hopefully. Um, and then we have distributed paper flyers throughout town, but we'll do that again with the start of the new academic year as well so people can find the routes again. Does that answer your question, Ken? I'd have to look it up. There'd be no public schedule except on uh, go to the computer. Well, we did distribute them throughout town and we'll do more again this fall. Or can I buy an, what do you call it, iPad and stand there and look up when I can get on the shuttle? You could do that. You could look on your phone or you could look at schedules that are distributed throughout town. We can leave them at the library and then at the city hall. And just to clarify, the um, Southwestern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission's role in, in this study was to develop a uh, just was to basically answer the question if it was feasible to merge the two systems and to, define and to define specific strategies on how that may be possible budgetarily and operationally. So um, I think that the, the finer points of how to disseminate information about uh, fares and shuttles, and, you know, that would really be up to the city and the university um, in whatever way that they decided to. Um, I obviously feel that the more information you have about it, the better. Uh, but really, that's that's up to you guys to decide. Have you published the study? No, no. Okay. Right so now, there is no published material. No, not yet. Uh, right now, we have the study is in draft form, and it's out to our partners that we've been working with through the grant process, and that's Amy and Howard, and they're both reviewing it right now. There is no published thing to look at. No, no. Any other questions? And we still have the taxi service. Mm -hmm. and people would call the taxi service for, for getting a ride to a particular de destination. That's right. Okay. I think that the, uh, what we've seen in the outreach that we've conducted is that the taxi service is invaluable. Lots of people use it, especially the senior community. Um, and overall, people are very pleased with it. Um, and what some, some municipalities, when they're working on systems like this, what we've seen is they, 
they limit taxi service to either the elderly or to people who don't live on a route. And we don't make that recommendation because we think that the taxi service is pretty great and, um, and we want more people to use it. James, I have a question too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> on your chart, you showed a map with routes. That's right. And the neighborhood route had the shuttle. Are you proposing a second shuttle to manage the other routes? So the, the map that we had, had, um, had were two concurrent shuttles running at the same time. Okay. And the budget scenarios that we looked at, no matter how we merged the two systems, that was something that we could afford to do. So the savings for doing this is invested in the shuttle. We won't see any savings on our budget line item. Actually, um, you could potentially see savings while, and while also facilitating two concurrent shuttle routes. Okay. Um, and clarification, there already are two buses. You just can't tell because they look the same. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Do we have a copy of this? Because uh, I don't think I have it. Yeah, I didn't get it either. I didn't get it either. I assume it's downstairs in our box. Is it that where it is? That paper copy? Uh, it came in my packet, so well, those of us who get our get packet copy. online, and, and, and that's a different thing than what they just presented. Thirty pages. So, oh, okay. If you notice yeah. what you, you have, oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the actual PowerPoint presentation. This yeah. yellow packet, I did not have access. No, you didn't have this. I didn't have packet. access. I didn't, I didn't have it. Think anybody who gets it on a flash drive didn't get it? If uh, if I can clarify, what we gave the um, the the council was a was a, a copy of the preliminary budget report. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a copy of the full plan. The full plan was, is, I think it's like 90 pages. And so in the interest of your time, we opted to give you uh, basically the essentials of the plan. So the, the raw information about budgets and routing information and the amount of hours you could purchase with each individual scenario. And I think, James, that what happened is that some council members, for some reason, did not receive this in their packet. So okay. we appreciate what we received, and we'll make sure we'll that make those sure that didn't get, that it, you get, get it. it. It looks like the electronic copy okay. didn't get it in there. Okay. And if anyone has any questions after the fact, um, since you weren't able to look at the packet, please contact me. I'd be happy to sit down with you and talk about it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it on your flash drive? Mm -hmm. No. No, uh, everything not. not. All right, next item, consideration of the consent calendar. The following items may be approved on a single motion and vote due to their routine nature of previous discussion. Please indicate to the council president if you will prefer separate discussion and action. First is minutes of the July 8th regular council meeting. B is payment of bills. C is appointment to boards and commissions. And this evening I am appointing uh, to the Commission on Aging three individuals, Linda Appenzeller, Pauline Gerhardt, and Arlene Lee, and to the Tourism Committee, Angie Donovan. We do have openings yet on the Historic Preservation Commission and also on the Board of Appeals ET Zoning. If anyone would be interested in serving on those, please check on our website. You can find an application to fill out or stop by City Hall and you can pick up that application. Next is proclamation and recognition of tornado recovery efforts. Larry, did you want to speak to that or? Certainly. Um, <clears throat> this has been added to your consent agenda as an FYI. Uh, the city of Platteville will be recognizing all of the tour, all of the tornado uh, vol recovery volunteers on Thursday evening at five o'clock or 530. Uh, the program starts at 5.30, and we intend to recognize the agencies, um, the volunteers, as well as those making donations uh, to help with the tornado recovery effort. And uh, as a token of our appreciation, I've prepared a proclamation to distribute to the agencies that have helped, re with, that have helped with the recovery efforts. Um, and so I'd like the City Council to uh, consider and endorse this uh, going forward. And um, we will be distributing that on Thursday evening. And the location of the? Uh, it'll, be held, it'll be held in City Park. It's part of the Party in the Park celebration put on by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's our opportunity on an annual basis to recognize community volunteers. And this year we're partnering to um, add the tornado relief uh, volunteers to the effort. OK. The last item is licenses, one and or two-year operator's licenses, which are in your packet. 
concern I, motion. I would like that item removed, and then I would move uh, adoption of the consent connect calendar A, B, C, and D. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second <clears throat> to uh, up, approve A, B, C, and D. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth? Yes. Den? I'm excuse me. Sorry. Dawes? Yes. Motion carries. And now I would like to um, move approval of licenses, one-year uh, one operator's licenses for as published Andrew Hayes, Ian Ottaway, and Roger Ryder, and two-year operator's licenses for Kyle Dagens, Joe Friedrichs, Amber Gee, Keith Gillingham, Shane Groom, Joseph Hack, Daniel Keel, Jesus Melendez, Paige Powers, Catherine Ryder, Kathy Richardson, Benjamin Siegman, Timothy Stoffergen, and Karen Welsh. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next is citizens' comments, observations, and petitions. I have one. Luke Peters. I, I mean. I'm sorry. Do we want to let Amy report for the university on the tornado? Um, we can do that right after Luke. How's that? Okay. All right, Luke. Sure. Uh, I was asked to speak to you today about uh, some of the upcoming or uh, in process fundraising uh, opportunities that the uh, recreation part was doing. Uh, the first one is our Pizza for Parks um, certificate, which is a partnership with Pizza Hut, um, in which we asked our soccer teams um, to uh, help sell uh, coupon books for $10 to Pizza Hut, good for a free medium pizza plus $30 in other coupons. And thanks to a generous donation from the Binding Trust, the full $10 for those purchases will be going into our Platteville Parks Endowment Fund, which will help fund future projects. Um, so that's been a great fundraiser. So far, the soccer kids have brought in uh, uh, nearing on uh, fifteen hundred dollars um, worth of uh, sales there, so that I'll be going into that account. So that's been a, a good success for it. However, we do have them available if anyone's interested uh, at the uh, recreation office or at the uh, um, um, Platteville Family Aquatic Center to pick up. So if anyone is looking for a uh, pizza sometime for lunch, dinner, or if any businesses want to treat their employees to pizzas, be sure to pick those up. Um, the uh, second uh, fundraiser that or fundraising effort that we we're doing is actually for our swim team. Um, we opened up this year for the first time uh, sponsorship for, for our swim team and for uh, uh, in very short time we had eight sponsors um, which brought in uh, 50, over $1,500 um, to help uh, fund the swim team and bring their budget much closer to uh, breaking even which will be a great help. Um, so we're very thankful for all the sponsors that stepped up on very short notice to uh, sponsor our swim team. And the final one kind of on uh, also on short notice, uh, uh, our swim team uh, is going to be doing a swim-a-thon um, where they will swim laps and take sponsorships and that money will go to the Tornado Relief Fund here in Platteville. So I'm just here to announce those three uh, good projects that we're working on. And when is the... Uh, You're going to catch me. That was the last minute thing. I apologize. <laughs> All right. So if they want to sponsor, they contact you or are they... They can contact my office and I will put them in touch with uh, Matt Wonderland, who is the uh, current coach of the team. Okay. All right, Amy, would you like to give us an update? If, if you would, come up to the microphone and introduce yourself. And That's what you get for walking in with me. <laughs> um, I'm Amy Spohn, Safety and Risk Manager for the University. Um, and just for updates, um, as far as the stadium, we're still set to be up and going with that, hopefully, middle of September to the end of September. Memorial Park, we're still not sure of access that will be gained and the timeline for that. Um, does anyone have any questions? How about the M? The M? Um, I'm not sure that was not tornado related, so we're still waiting um, to hear the status of that. So that was a different situation. Hmm. How about the windows and stuff at the dorm? The what? How are the dorms doing? Um, we're on schedule. So we still have contingency plans, but we are on the schedule. Positive. Good news. So. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is uh, reports, committee reports, Commission on Aging, Bonin. I have nothing to add besides what's in your 
report? Museumboards.com. No, nothing to add. Library board, I have nothing to add either. Water and Sewer Commission? Bonus. No addition on my part. Okay. Me not, nor I. Okay. I do have to ask Carolyn, is this your last official council meeting? <laughs> so as, as the library council rep to the library board, um, Carolyn is retiring. And so I would like to, on behalf of the council and city, say thank you very much for your excellent leadership. We really appreciate it. You will be missed. We don't want you to go. <laughs> Other reports. Building inspectors report is in your packet. Department progress reports are in your packet. Any questions on any of those? Yes. Um, I want to commend the library director for the uh, completeness of the report that you gave monthly whenever it came out. I, I do have a question here that uh, pertains to page number one, and maybe Howard can answer that question. And that is, uh, it, and Carolyn, and it talks about water in the uh, elevator pit. So Howard, how deep is that water down? Is I, it going into a storm sewer eventually, or is it just actually, going into the rocks? I would rather see if Carolyn could come to the mic. She has all of the details on that. Sure. I think I, I, I bring the question up because in relation to if we put underground parking there, whether the city is, uh, whether that development is going to be using a pump or, or storm sewers to handle that water, what's going to happen? I think this is something I just discovered because of working on this project with the block development uh, with the grade nine feet difference between Main Street and Pine Street um, and heavy storm um, and torrential rains a lot of the water doesn't uh, um, there's just so much going into the drain that's by the library and I think as I watched my um, from my window after the tornado to see the rivers gushing into that drain. I think that's why over the years I have s had problems with the pit. Um, there's not a whole lot of water all the time. We did have one problem when a, a swimming pool was emptied into, the, into our lot and that caused the burnout of a, um, the heater and the base of the pit as well as uh, water got into the oil pump so that had to be replaced. But we've been monitoring it. So now when we check monthly in the elevator, we watch and water does um, seep up into the, the walls of the four, you know, the four walls of the shaft. I think there might be um, some foundation work that needs to be done. We're exploring that. We're sort of waiting at the same time to see what's happening with the block development. So I think it's a combination of what we've observed over the years and um, we're taking care of it, but we have to really monitor that. So did you have a specific question about, um, other than the two events that we had, the, the torrential rains after the tornado and the swimming pool incident with the water being emptied into um, the drain that the sump pump couldn't handle it, burned out, we had to replace that. Um, I think it's under control, but we're, we watch it. Um, it's been recommended that we buy a pump that alerts us to the fact that water is rising, but it's quite expensive. Plus, I think if we check it monthly, uh, we're okay with that, especially if a new building is, is imminent. So. To get to the other part of your question that you were talking about regarding the library block development, that is something that the consultant will have to consider and address when he's building his uh, foundation and putting in those sub-basements for underground parking. And we've discussed that in our, in our meetings. We have weekly meetings on that internally. And, and I believe that that has been uh, identified with the developer that, that there is that potential and, and that they'll have to figure that all out. They're, they were going to have to have some sort of way to pump any water out of that basement anyhow because if you have cars that come in with snow on the roof or something like that, they get down in there, the, the snow melts, they're going to have to have a place for that water to go anyways. So they just need to make sure that they, that they uh, design everything accordingly. And I believe that we're, 
we're working with the developer to make sure that, that they're aware of those potential issues. The building's also been there 40 years, so I think that um, had I been aware of that, that grade difference, I would have monitored a little bit more and checked the foundation, but it's been a fascinating uh, discovery. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to mention that um, the next election is on August 12th, which will be the same night as your next council meeting. Um, and we are starting to issue absentee ballots in our office on starting on Monday. And it will be the, the full two weeks before the election. So you can come in any time between 8 and 5. Thank you for that. Any other announcements? All right, seeing none, we're going to go on to the first action item, Ordinance 1413, amending Section 3615 and 4108, Intoxicants in Public Places, Exceptions. Um, as discussed last time, this is a uh, change to the ordinance, um, both Ordinance 3615-3 and 4108-3, um, which I believe were intended to read the same thing, but uh, there, there was a slight error when we were reviewing them. Um, as noted, one does indicate that... Uh, um, permits can only be issued in city park and or city parks and the other one indicates they can be issued in Legion Park um, So one of the things we're doing is correcting that uh, variance um, The other two well, we're doing two other things um, in section or 3b um, We're clarifying how uh, alcohol consumption permits can be issued um, The recommendation from staff is that the head of the recreation department and his or her, her designee um, can approve alcohol consumption permits in park shelters in conjunction with reservations, but all other permits must go before the licensing committee. Um, so that is one change we're noting. And the other exception we're looking at adding is uh, allowing an exception to the open intoxicant public, uh, open intox um, regulations in Mountain View Park for registered campers in the, in, in the shelters, grilling areas, and picnic areas between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10.30 p.m in any time on their campsites. Questions? I move uh, that we accept uh, these recommendations, uh, changing the exceptions to Ectotric in Public Places, chapters 36.15, parent three, and chapter 41.08, chapter, or parent three. Second. I have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seaboth Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next is Resolution 1423, authorizing an urban forestry catastrophic storm grant. Larry. Uh, yes. On June 16th, the city of Platteville experienced uh, two tornadoes. And uh, as a result of that, we've lost approximately 700 trees or more. Um, we, as having a catastrophic storm event, um, are now eligible for an orbit, urban forestry catastrophic storm grant. Um, the grant uh, would help replace some of the trees. Uh, initially, we estimated 50 to 100 trees. Uh, today, I understand the number is as high as 165 trees. So with any luck, um, we would receive funding from the DNR to provide replacement trees, uh, and we asked the City Council tonight to approve the application for the catastrophic storm grant. The 165 trees, where are those located to be? Where are they going to be located? Uh, we're applying for the grant with the intent of using the trees in the city parks as well as the, for, uh, as well as the cemetery. And Luke is, who's writing a grant, Luke? Uh, we've hired a contractor, a contractor named Angela Wright, excuse me, Angie Wright. Um, she has done several grants for us in the past and um, is stepping forward to do this grant application. Uh, it's my understanding that the PCA is also going to be filing an application and that the funds received under that grant application would go to assist the university with planting trees on their property. I have a question. Are these competitive grants or is this? They are competitive, but it is limited competition. Um, the only communities that are eligible are those located in the counties that were declared a disaster. Uh, I believe that was Green, Grant, and I want to say Dane County. 
Um, and so any community in those counties could apply for this uh, program. And further clarification, I've been <coughs> working with Angie on this from the university standpoint. Um, university and the city would not be competing each other per se. They actually, the grant ranks where you're locating the trees. So trees and streets medians are ranked highest, parks are next, and then what's called institutional lands is the third ranking, and that's the lowest ranking, and that's what the uni university we classified as. So we're different classifications. I make a motion we approve the resolution authorizing staff to apply for the Urban Forestry Catastrophic Storm Grant. Second. I have another question. Okay. Um, did you consider that for the cemetery, you would not put in the trees from the standpoint of uh, easier maintenance? We were looking at uh, replacing trees along the perimeter and not, not in the interior portion of the cemetery for the reasons that you're talking about. Okay. Any other questions? And then uh, as far as the location of trees, it was mentioned parks and uh, cemetery. Will there be any preference as far as location within the uh, tornado struck areas? I, I yes. believe there would, yeah. That the, the, the principal intent of this grant is to help replace some of the trees that were taken away or demolished. So I, I, I suspect Harrison Park would be a, a principal destination um, perhaps one or two up in Valley View Park um, and then the cemetery. Uh, the cemetery, um, uh, there's a development on the east side of the cemetery, so I would like to see more trees. Excuse me, that'd be the south side uh, where there's a roadway or driveway going in. I'd, I'd like to try to get more trees on that side as well. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, we have a motion and a second and we'll vote. Stockhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seabold Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next engineering contract for EDA infrastructure project. Howard? Okay. Yes. Uh, City of Platteville solicited proposals for engineering services for our EDA project to uh, install the infrastructure in that portion of the industry park. Uh, you folks approved the preliminary plat earlier this evening. Um, this was done in accordance with EDA guidance where the proposals are reviewed to determine the best qualified firm and then the fee is negotiated. We received proposals from IW Engineering in Dubuque, CWE from Viroqua and Delta Three here in Platteville. And we recommend the award to Delta Three Engineering subject to EDA approval uh, they've had a very close relationship with the city. They've successfully worked with us on our last EDA project, and, and I believe that their proposal meets our needs the best. Uh, the, the fee is $152,100, and so I'm recommending that approval subject, uh, that you approve the contract subject to EDA approval. Questions? Is there a motion? I so move. Second. I have a motion and a second. We'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seabold Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. And last action item for this evening, 2015-2019 um, capital improvement plan. Really? Yes. Uh, the city council reviewed a draft proposal at your last meeting. We also had a short budget meeting in between where we reviewed the CIP. Uh, as it stands now, the revised CIP uh, includes expenses to the tax levy in 2015 of $1,063,408. You will note that is under the amount of fund balance that we are directed in our financial management plan to transfer to the CIP. That balance was $1,084,493. So if you approve the plan tonight, we will be able to move forward without borrowing additional funds in 2015 um, for the general tax levy. Questions? Is there a motion? I move to approve. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Move we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Seabold Wilson? Yes. Doss? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is a closed session, so we need a motion to go into closed session. Please read the language on our agenda. I'll make a motion that we go into Wisconsin or closed session per Wisconsin statute 19.851E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session, considering the purchase of property near industrial park. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we'll vote. Stackhausen? Yes. Bonin? Yes. Killian? Yes. Nichols? Yes. Nichols? I'm sorry. Seabold? Yes. And Dawes? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Take a three or five minute break. Three to five minutes? Three to five. Yeah. Okay. We've got flexibility.